of children of Israel. Pharaoh said, And what is the Lord of the Alamin, mankind, jinn, and all that exists? Moses replied, Lord of the heavens and the earth and all that is between them, if you seek to be convinced with certainty. Pharaoh said to those around, Do you not hear what he says? Moses said, Your Lord and the Lord of the of your ancient forefathers. Pharaoh said, Verily, your messenger who has been sent to you is a madman. Moses said, Lord of the East and the West and all that is between them. If you did but understand, Pharaoh said, If you choose an Illa, a God other than me, I will certainly put you among the prisoners. Moses said, Even if I bring you something manifest and convincing, Pharaoh said, Bring it forth then, if you are of the truthful. Moses proves himself right. The degree of the conflict suppressed in, the, in this dialogue reached its apex. Thus the tone of dialogue changed. Moses used a convincing intellectual argument against Pharaoh, However, Pharaoh escaped from the circle of the dialogue based on the logic and began a dialogue of another type, a type which Moses could not bear to follow, a dialogue of menacing and threatening. Pharaoh deliberately adopted the style of the absolute ruler. He asked Moses how he dared to worship Allah. Did he not know that Pharaoh was a god? After declaring his divinity, Pharaoh asked, Moses, how he dared to worship another god. The punishment for this crime was imprisonment. It was not permitted for anyone to worship any uh, one other than the pharaoh. Moses understood that the intellectual arguments did not succeed. The calm dialogue was converted from sarcasm to mentioning charity, then to scorn, then to the threat of imprisonment. Moses said, even... If I bring you something manifest and convincing, Pharaoh said, Bring it forth, then, if you are the truthful, are of the truthful. So Moses threw his stick, and behold, it was a serpent, manifest, and he drew out his hand, and behold, it was white to all beholders. Moses defeats the magicians. Pharaoh's amazement, to, amazement turned to terror, fearing that his rule was, a, it was in danger, he addressed his advisers. These are two wizards who will strip you of your best traditions and drive you of the country with their magic. What do you advise? They counseled Pharaoh to detain Moses and his brother while they summoned the cleverest magicians in the country. Then they too could show their skills of magic and change sticks into serpents. In this way, they sought to reduce the influence of Moses' miracles on the masses. Pharaoh detained Moses and Aaron. He dispatched couriers, couriers all over the land to enlist the best magicians. He offered each successful magician a big reward, including appointment as a royal courtier. On the customary festival day, festival day which attracted citizens from all over the Egyptian empire. Pharaoh in arranged for a public at a contest between Moses and the magicians. The people came in droves as, they, as near before when they heard of the greatest cont contest ever between Pharaoh, Pharaoh's many magicians, and a single man who claimed to be a prophet. They had also heard of a baby who had once floated down the river Nile in a basket landed on, Prof Fa on Pharaoh's palace grounds, being reared as a prince, and who later had fled off for killing an Egyptian with a single blow. With a single blow. Everyone was eager and excited to watch this great contest before it began Moses arose. There was a hush in the huge crowd. Moses addressed the magicians. Woe well unto you if you invent a lie against Allah by calling his miracles magic and by not being honest with the Pharaoh. 
Woe unto you if you do not know the difference between the truth and falsehood. Allah will destroy you with his punishment, for he who lies against Allah fails miserably. Moses had spoke sincerely and made the magicians think, but they were overwhelmed by their greed for money and glory. They hoped to impress the people with their magic and to expose Moses as a fraud and a cheat. Moses asked the magicians to perform first. They threw their magical objects down on the ground. Their staffs and ropes took the forms of wriggling serpents, while the crowd watched in amazement. Pharaoh and his men applauded loudly. Then Moses threw his staff. It began to wriggle, and became an enormous serpent. The, pro the people stood up, craning craning their necks for a better view. Pharaoh and his men sat silently as one by one Moses' huge serpent swallowed all the snakes. Moses bent to pick it up and it became a staff in his hand. The crowd rose like a great wave shouting and screaming with excitement. A wonder like this had never been seen before or on witnessing the power of Moses. The magicians prostrated themselves to Allah, declaring, We believe in the Lord of Moses and Aaron. Pharaoh was angry and began plotting his next move. He charged that the demonstration had been arranged secretly between Moses and the magicians. He demanded that the magicians confess to their scheme, threatening them with death. Threatening them with death. They refused to denounce Allah and stuck to their sincerity of their belief. No longer hiding his cruel nature, Pharaoh threatened to cut off their hands and feet and to crucify them on the trunks of palm trees as an example to his subjects. Almighty Moses de uh, defears the magician. Almighty Allah recounted this event. He, Pharaoh, said, Have you come to drive us out of our land with your magic, O Moses? Then verily we can produce magic the like thereof. So appoint a meeting between us and you, which neither we nor you shall fail to keep in an open wide place, where both shall have a just and equal chance, and beholders could witness the competition. Moses said, Your appointed meeting is the day of the festival, and let the people assemble when the sun has risen for noon. So Pharaoh withdrew, devised his plot, and then came back. Moses said to them, Woe unto you, invent not a lie against Allah, lest he should destroy you completely by a torment, and, and surely he who invents a lie against Allah will fail miserably. And then they debated with one another, when another what they must do, and they kept their talk secret. They said, Verily, there are two magicians, their object is to drive you out from your land and magic, and overcome your chiefs and nobles. So devise your plot, and then assemble in line, and whoever overcomes this day will be indeed successful. They said, O oh Moses, either you throw first, or we be the first to throw. Moses said, Nay, throw you first, then behold their robes and their sticks by their magic appeared to him as though they moved fast. So Moses conceived a fear in himself. We Allah said, Fear not, surely you will have the upper hand. Throw that which is in your right hand. It will swallow up that which they have made. That which they have made is only a magician's Stri magician's trick, st trick, and the magician will never be success successful, no matter whatever amount of skill he may attain. So the magicians fell down prostrate. They said, "We believe in the Lord of Aaron and Moses." Pharaoh said, "We be 
Pharaoh said, Believe in him, believe you in him, Moses, before I give you permission. Verily, he is your chief who taught you magic. So I will surely cut off your hands and feet on opposite sides, and I will cru cru surely crucify you and on the trunks of palm trees. And you shall surely know which of us, I, Pharaoh, or the Lord of Moses, and uh, Moses, Allah, can give the severe and more lasting torment. They said, We prefer you not over the clear signs, with the clear signs that have come to us, and to him Allah, who created us. So decree regarding this life of the world. Verily, we have believed in our Lord, that he may forgive us our faults. And the magic to which you did compel us, and Allah is better as regards reward in comparison to your Pharaoh's reward and more lasting as regards punishment in comparison to you punishment to your punishment allah allah's description of believers and non-believers verily whoever comes to his lord as a mudrim criminal polytheist disbel disbeliever in the oneness of allah and his messenger sinner then surely for him is hell therein he will neither die nor live but whoever comes to him, Allah, as a believer in the oneness of Allah, and has done righteous good deeds, for such are the high ranks in the hereafter, everlasting gardens and paradise under which rivers flow, wherein they will abide forever. Such is the reward of those who purify themselves by abstaining from all kinds of sins and evil deeds which Allah has forbidden, and by doing all that which Allah has ordained the people's non-reaction to the defeat of the magicians. The magicians represented the elite of the Egyptian society. They were its scholars. They prostrated before righteousness, but the people abandoned them and left them to their fate. The path of righteousness was plain, but in spite of this the people did nothing but stand by and watch. If every one of the Egyptians had stopped to pick up a piece of brick, and had thrown it at Pharaoh, he would have fallen dead and the history of Egypt would have been changed. This obviously did not happen. None of the people moved. Each one stood motionless in his place. The people did nothing but watch, and they paid the price of this inactivity. They were drowned later as the price for the cowardice of one day. The Pharaoh's reaction to Moses' victory. Moses and Aaron left, and Pharaoh returned to his palace. Pharaoh entered to his palace.